Welcome to the 2022 Economic Preparation and Depression Channel. I'm your host, Tony. Thank you for joining me on this day after July the 4th, July the 5th, 2022 in the U.S. here. Uh, we have just briefly things to talk about. The hyperinflation that's continuing in the car market and the used car, the new car market, as well as how the major stock indices will do heading into this third and fourth quarter, this crucial quarter here. Um, and things are, you know, really going to be picking up here toward the end of the year in terms of black swan events and other things that we haven't seen before. I'm pretty sure. Um, please be sure to subscribe to preach to me for the latest financial news in the U.S. The pure 100 percent undata rated truth here. Um, and I thank you for your support. Um, and I'll read everyone's comments. And, and we also if you have any suggestions for future videos, please make the sure those in comments as well. And I hope everyone had a great, wonderful fourth. We're still in the blessed country, uh, the most blessed country in the world. God has blessed us, the United States, despite all the issues that we're currently facing here um, in the nation. So let's get right into it, guys. NPR.org today or a couple of days ago. Monthly payments. This is the car monthly payments for a new car have crossed seven hundred dollars. What that means, um, guys, you remember that you couldn't get a used car uh for under a, a decent used car certified used car for under 25k a couple months ago you remember there was a shortage of uh new cars being manufactured because of the chip shortage for you know they want to have the cars but they were having a microchip shortage now the, both new and used cars prices are elevated to extremes here according to cox automotive moody analytics monthly payment the average this is just the average meaning that some could be paying higher than this uh i have a couple of friends that are paying in the 600 hundred dollar range uh for their new cars uh 625 you know uh five five hundred five fifty 550 a month for the new cars that they got i believe last year or the year before last but guys the average monthly payment crossed 700 dollars a month so that means people are paying higher uh, then that and some people are paying lower that's the mean but guys that's not even counting ladies and gentlemen that's not counting uh insurance as you know registration fees uh emissions vehicle fees all these other fees that a lot of states have uh just to operate the vehicle and not counting the gas that's at 45 489 a gallon according to AAA is the average for the national average that has come down some uh a couple of cents that's good news but um that's not gonna last for long as you know so this guy says, I joke with people that every new car purchase is a luxury car purchase. I don't care what you're buying, says Ivan Drury, senior manager of insights at, at the car buying expert Edmunds.com. This is true, but in America, we rely on our cars to get to work. Three out of four Americans commute to work by car. Even if you're working from home and you're remote working, you still have to have your car to go to appointments, doctor's appointments. Maybe you're going to get some prepping supplies or, you know, shopping or things of that nature. But yet, for more and more Americans, owning a car is becoming unaffordable. Um, these prices have gotten so high. A new truck, you go look at a new Ford F-150 truck, Raptor, or uh, something like that. You're talking sixty, seventy, eighty, ninety thousand dollars for these trucks, and they don't last as long as as the cars that we had growing up when we, when we were going, coming up. You know, they're made of this aluminum auto body material here, and now we're switching to this. Uh, we're switching to this. EV stuff that's going to cost even more money to produce. And what happens when you need maintenance on the EV hybrid car? It's going to be even more expensive to fi fix the stuff because the batteries are more expensive. The lithium is toxic. Uh, all kind of moving parts that you can't you can't just fix in your own and swap like you would normally do on a regular gas engine car. So this is going to be very, very interesting. The average cost of a new car is top $47,000. Now, this doesn't say whether the truck or SUV or some type of car, but that is very believable. Look, you can get a new Honda, a Toyota Camry, a 2022, 2023. The fully top of the line one are, is that is at that price. So that does make sense. I mean, the basic model, you're talking over thirty grand just coming out the door. So let alone these luxury cars like Lexus's, um, you know, Toyota, I mean, Lexus or uh, BMW or Mercedes or Porsches and all that kind of stuff. But the thing that's going to really hurt people is that the payments are high and the insurance is even higher. OK, so and with this interest rates going up, guys, we're looking at interest rates. And this if you have perfect credit, interest rates are already at for cars at seven percent if you have credit around you know 700 or above or 750 or whatever the score is above if you have a 600 or below or something you're talking about a 10 percent 12 percent car entrance on top of the payment that's gonna be 
just stifling. So inflation and recession fears are squeezing some industries more than others. As you can see, airlines, movie theaters, and specialty retailers are among the businesses so far that have been shielded from a slow economy. And you got to remember, the only reason why these pe- these industries are shielded is because people will normally purchase tickets months in advance, airline tickets months in advance, because they know they want to get ahead of the price game here. Movie theater tickets and specialty retailers. Well, you know, school kids just got out of school in what in in in, in, in beginning of June. So the t- movie theater they need something to do. Movie theaters are one of the few staples that are open for a lot of the high school kids and below those, you know, in middle school kids, something that they can do in a lot of these suburbs and inner cities um, that they can do peacefully and spend money that's relatively cheap to afford. And specialty retailers, well, you know, obviously the malls are dead, but outside of the malls, you can still find people going to get few essential clothing and things for the kids or for the adults here. So you can see people shopping at Target here. Um, Some of these stories they're going to brace for sticker shock because inflation is already continuing to grow. We're almost at 9%, 10% inflation. I told you guys that we're going to be going toward 10% inflation very shortly here. By the end of this month, we're going to be at 10% inflation because you got to remember the, um, the what do you call it the federal reserve meeting is at the end of this month around the 25th of this month where they're going to raise interest rates again 75 basis points or maybe even a full basis point so things are really going to be getting tighter and tighter here in this economy and you can see today the news and observer Major stock indices, how they fare today. The the Dow was down 129 points. NASDAQ was up and Russell 2000 was up, barely, you know. But for the year, the S&P 500 is down almost 1,000 points. And the Dow is down almost 5,000 points just for the year. So half the year is gone and we're down quite a substantial bit. And things are continuing to go down. Uh, Oil is below $100 a barrel since May, so that's a good news. But I believe that that's only short-lived. You look at the GDP quarterly projections. This is the gross domestic product of our $15 trillion economy, U.S. economy. You can see that we had negative GDP back in 2022 quarter one. Okay, So we're down negative 1.5% GDP right now. In order to be officially in a recession, you need two quarters of negative GDP, according to the media and according to economists, senior economists and experts, right? So we already got one quarter of negative GDP. Now we're in quarter, the second quarter. The projections with economists was a 2.4% increase, right? And then for this third quarter that we're in, the projection is a 2.8% increase. Now, normally for a good year, quote unquote, you would want GDP to grow at a, a clip of 3.5% to 4% GDP um, you know, for a good year, quote unquote, to be a stable year. So we're already below projections and these numbers keep getting lower and lower every estimate, guys. And so here's the concern going into the third quarter and fourth quarter of this uh, economy and of this year, guys. We have yet to see the fallout from the housing credit crunch market, uh, meaning that as the mortgage rates goes up, mortgage applications go down. And so as the rental crisis continues, the rental price is rising, we have yet to see the squeeze from that. We have yet to see the squeeze from the supply shock of the food shortage and the oil shortage because Russia's making deals with China and other countries now to send natural gas and they're making a killing off the Russian ruble because of the oil money that they're getting from other countries as a result of shipping oil to other countries and that's shipping less oil over here to the uh, United States uh, cadre. Uh, So, guys... This means that we're going to see another negative quarter of GDP. So right now they're projecting 2.8% coming up here in the third quarter. I expect this to be revised down after the um, after the federal meeting, reserve meeting in end of July and in August. So look for this to drop back down to 1% or less, basically stagnating. And that's when officially they're going to declare us into a recession, probably sometime in October, just before the midterm elections. We're going to be in a uh, officially in a recession, even though, you know, you and I know that we've been in a recession for quite some time here since the beginning of this year. So. Uh, you know, I'm going to see car lots like this filled with new cars. You're going to see car lots filled with certified, quote unquote, used cars. They're going to be selling at new car prices. So you may get a used car that's maybe, oh, maybe three, four years old selling at a new car price, 40K or above, which is absolutely crazy. But that's what you're going to see. And time to electric vehicles get on the road out here, guys. Um, you're going to see those double in price, 60000 for some of these EVs. And they're going to claim that the range is 300 miles or more, but you're not going to be able to get that, get that many miles out of it. Unfortunately, guys, because the electrical grid is not set up for that. The infrastructure, we don't have the infrastructure set up for that for everyone to have an electric vehicle and, and, live, in, and live in the land. And besides the point, uh, the, um, uh, the, the, the new Green Deal that they've been trying to push the Biden administration, that hadn't passed. The infrastructure bill hasn't passed. So we're not going to have the infrastructure to, to have all this done, guys. And they know that. And so we're basically in a situation where we're crunched for money 
and most of the priority money is going to go to defense and keeping the American economy sort of limping along. And that means that could possibly mean I've heard talks about another stimulus check coming, a fourth stimulus check coming later on this year. I think it's just hearsay. Um, I think there will be no more stimulus.